Huge thanks to each and every one of you for taking time out this evening to join us. This is our second live Zoom Q&A of the day on uh, International Women's Day. Uh, the topic of this evening's session is cricket, the game is for everyone. And I'm delighted that we're joined by our panel of three professional cricketers, uh, all of whom more than prove that point. Um, kicking off with uh, Amara Carr, Middlesex Women and Sunrisers. Naomi Dutani of the same two sides, Middlesex Women and Sunrisers, and Cordelia, also Middlesex Women and Sunrisers. So just a bit of housekeeping to let everybody know. Um, we've already compiled a load of questions um, to get things going and to get the conversation going. However, we do obviously have the chat facility available. So if anybody uh, that's watching wants to ask a question throughout the uh, session, by all means, pop that in the chat section, and I'll come to it at an appropriate time. So I'm going to start off with Naomi um, first off. Um, Naomi, tell us about your journey and when did, all, when did it all start for you and how did you first get into cricket? Hi everyone, hope everyone is doing well. Um, so yeah, my journey, uh, probably like most other young girls playing cricket with their older brother in, in the back garden, uh, but we also played loads of different sports. Um, and then my brother actually said, oh, you're actually pretty good at hitting a ball and catching a ball. Why don't we go and find you a local local team? So down the road, I went to Perivel, um to join a boys club. And that was the first time, I think around 10 years old, I joined the club. Um, played there for about four or five years and, and then stumbled across uh, quite quickly uh, into under 11s uh, Middlesex and kind of just went through the pathway since then. I think I'm pretty sure this is probably my 15th or 16th year in the in the Middlesex stuff so um been been there a long time and then yeah just kind of dipped in and out different pathways um but yeah the main thing was just you know playing at school playing with a brother um and then eventually um finding out that girls played cricket and uh and kind of just took every opportunity I could as 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 I got older you mentioned other sports names that you played. What was it specifically about cricket that appealed to you? Was that based on your abilities to play and, and your brother's kind of recommendation? Or? Um, I think, I think yeah, a mixture of both. I mean, I was quite into uh, martial arts at the same time, but cricket kind of was a bit more appealing that it was outside in the sun, um, the kind of social aspects of it with uh, my parents being quite into barbecues and stuff. So we'd always be around um doing doing that kind of thing and uh yeah just being out in the sun and i mean even till this day i'm chasing the sun um in the winter seasons and um and still love doing that over to you amara a similar question i know your love of the game started down in devon where you first started playing how did you get into the game back then and what made you fall in love with cricket um yeah so it's a similar story really to dats in that um, for me, I had two older brothers and a dad who were very heavily involved in our local cricket club and kind of just got hooked on it through them, really. I think I spent most of my weekends or evenings at one of their matches kind of in the nets with all the other kids just playing one hand, one bounce and all those sorts of games. And from there, just transitioned into going to some of the training, um, playing in some of my brother's games and then... Um, it probably wasn't so that was probably I was about eight nine years old and it probably wasn't until kind of my early teens where I kind of similar realized that there were women's clubs and kind of got involved um, actually a, a, a feather a, a fellow former Devonian um, Heather Knight actually kind of I think my brothers used to play against her a lot um, at one of the other local creek clubs and actually it was kind of through seeing her play and and then kind of sparking an interest in kind of how do I get involved in girls and women's cricket as well. I was going to say you could have worse uh, role models. Yeah. Um, you mentioned obviously playing in your brother's sides. How tough was that as a girl trying to make a name for herself in cricket playing alongside other boys? Um, yeah, I guess it was tricky in the sense that you 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 always had kind of had those initial reactions about a girl playing and not wanting to get out to a girl and I think kind of when you went out to bat like the field would come in and all those sorts of things um I think for me in my actual club it was it, it I was very fortunate that I think because I had my brothers there and 
I grew up around the cricket club, it was it was quite quickly accepted when I played. It was kind of more when you went and played against other clubs that it was kind of a shock that a girl would rock up and all those sorts of things. Um, but yeah, I think initially for me, it, yeah, they were just my friends and we were playing cricket and that's all it, yeah, they just saw it for what it was. If I was good enough, then I played. Um, yeah, so it was probably, it was okay, really. <laughs> nice. And yourself, Cords? Yeah, so um, good evening, everyone. But cricket has always been a big part of my life um, from when I was a, a youngster, really. So dad used to play professionally as well. Um, so that's kind of how I really got into into cricket. Um, I started over at Loughton Cricket Club. So I started over at the Essex side of things. And um, I used to play with the boys a lot um, at Loughton and at school. Um, so that kind of was my first exposure uh, to sort of boys cricket and what cricket was all about sort of when you're when you're playing it at a, a fairly decent level um I then went over to Essex um and started playing for the women's team um well the sort of working my way through the county age groups from about nine all the way through uh to the women's squad um and then I decided to make a move across to Middlesex after I finished at uni um I just wanted a bit of a fresh start and I'd been at Essex I think for about 16 years at that point so um, I'd been there for a long, long time and um, just fancied a little bit of a change. Um, and so, yeah, so I've been at Middlesex now for about three years. Um, also been involved, um, like the other girls as well, in the KSL and sort of dipped in and out of the England pathways and stuff. So um, it's been a real journey to sort of get to where we are now. And, um, you know, it's, it's quite an honour and a privilege to, to be able to play professional cricket at the domestic level for the, for the Sunrisers. Brilliant. I always think it's interesting to hear players' backgrounds and how you first got into the game. I guess nowadays, of course, things are slightly different. I'm going to stay with you, Cords. We've got um, ECB introductory programmes like All Stars Cricket and Dynamos Cricket, and they're run at roughly 130 clubs across Middlesex. Obviously, nothing like that existed in your day. How useful would something like that have been? Oh, I think that would have been brilliant. Like, like the other girls were saying, we all kind of grew up just playing. Um, around cricket clubs and playing at school and that kind of thing but the fact that there are now new structures and new sort of clubs that that young kids can get involved with uh, kids their own age as well who also have a, a shared interest in cricket um is just such a positive step in the right direction for for these young children and kind of to explore their passion for cricket um whether they want to take it further or not but at least there is that that sort of pathway and those those clubs they can get involved with with their friends and and enjoy the sport really Absolutely. I mean, I think parents can book their youngsters on to uh, our All Stars and Dynamos programmes from the 22nd of March. What would you say to any youngsters on this call or any that are watching this after we've uploaded it onto social media? What would you say to any of those youngsters that were thinking about picking up a bat and a ball for the very first time? Oh, I'd say go for it. Just honestly, cricket's a great sport and you make so many great friendships along the way. So I've known Mars and Dats for over 10 years now and, and we're really good friends and you know we've played all our cricket sort of growing up together and stuff and I just say go for it give it a go see if you enjoy it um, I'm sure you will because it's a great game and you know um, we've made some great friendships and and all together it's just it's just a brilliant game to be a sort of a part of and you know cricket's it's quite a small world um, so we've got a nice little family going on so it's yeah definitely just get involved and throw yourself into it. Lovely to hear. Um, thanks, Cords. Gnomes, back to you for this one. I've heard the term pathway used a number of times already, and obviously that's the route that youngsters can take from starting out in the game through the game. We've got almost 70 clubs in Middlesex now providing youth cricket from under nines, softball games, through to under 14s, hardball cricket. And many of those offer women's teams. Um, each of you, I think, probably didn't benefit from that back in the time. But has there ever been a better time to get involved in girls' cricket than now? I think it's the best time to get involved um, in women's cricket because, um, as Court said, with even with the All-Stars and Dynamos and then the various older pathways, there's so many opportunities to, to train and um, to get better at your skills and, and just really immerse yourself in, in as much or as, as little as you want to. But I think you know, comparing to what we had, you know, we we would have to kind of find our cricket and kind of do a lot of things independently. But there is there is so much out there that, 
you know if you if you wanted to really give it a crack and um you know be part of those pathways and just go step by step then it's it's a really good time to to get involved and um there's so much support out there from the coaches and information to to get better nowadays so um yeah it's it's definitely a really good time to to be involved good to hear just staying with you gnomes on that pathway theme from under 14s up into the women's game I think we're going to be seeing roughly 250 games of women's cricket across Middlesex this summer. Uh, we've got the newly named Esme Irwin League, the newly named uh, Derek Morgan League, um, both now established. And, and there's some really great competitions going on now. What advice would you offer to anyone that's looking to join a club? And secondary to that, is it ever too late for people to think about starting the game? Uh, it's certainly never too late to start the game. You know, I know quite a few people, even um, even older women who who've found the sport in their later years and and thoroughly enjoyed it. I think um, that is, that's a tremendous amount of games that are being put on, and and that's something again, just that's just more opportunities to to play, to get better, and um, to really just uh, have fun doing it. And I wouldn't give it a second thought to 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 join a club, especially. Um, with, with the times that we've had now, some a cricket can't come at a better time to to get outside and and do something different and be social and and meet new people and just bring it all of those elements together. So definitely would um, get involved and and you never know where it might take you in the next couple of years as well. Thank you, Gnomes. Uh, Mars, on to you. Um, looking back to your time in club cricket, um, I mean, I remember mine very fondly. It was a safe, welcoming, friendly place to be where. I could play the game I loved with all of my mates. What are your memories of of the club that you played at and, and what makes club cricket so special? Um, yeah, similar. I think a few of it, we've touched on it, kind of it's the friends you make and kind of that sense of a, a family and a community at your cricket club and kind of certainly my experiences are of that in the sense. Um, I think, yeah, I've always felt very welcomed. I, I know that isn't the case across the country. And I think it's it's getting into a position where cricket clubs are female friendly first most and just encouraging youngsters to take up the game. And I think I, I've got really fond memories of you know, Friday evenings at my cricket club where, where the barbecue's on and it's just a really social environment, you know. I think we, we tended to have our like juniors training on a, a Friday night and our parents were kind of having a drink or just socialising as well so I think it's, it's it's that kind of environment where there's something for everyone you know you, you're, you're playing the game that you, you love and and also yeah you're just making friendships along the way and yeah I think like we've all said really. <laughs> Absolutely what would you I mean I, I remember my first introduction to the game was playing school here for my for my school 11 um, and that was before I joined my first club. But I was lucky enough that that route was kind of open to me, if you like, on that pathway stage. What would you suggest to people if their schools or colleges currently don't run women's cricket programmes? Um, I mean, if they're confident enough, I, they could challenge that. I mean, you could always ask the question, why, why don't you offer something, a girls' cricket programme? Um, I think that's at a stage where we want to be really I think if if it's something you're passionate about I think everyone should have the opportunity to play in their school or, or rather than having to go through a local creek club um because again I think sometimes we don't all have kind of people fighting those battles for us you know I, I was fortunate like I've said that I had brothers and my parents who kind of didn't let that be a barrier for me in terms I know I had days where I was kind of like I, I really I didn't want to go or put myself out there because I was worried I was going to be the only girl that kind of they were taking me along and and I kind of realized that it was okay um and then yeah I loved it from there on but I think yeah I would I would question why why our schools aren't necessarily always um offering girls programs and, and girls cricket training um so yeah that would be my advice <laughs> Really good advice. I remember interviewing Norman Cowan's former Middlesex and England cricketer, and he explained to me that his school didn't run cricket programmes and he got his uh, his PE teacher to start and he turned the reins over to Norman. Norman ran the side. Three years later, Norman was turning up for a trial at Middlesex and we all know what happened after that. So <laughs> I think if you want something, make it happen. Um, yeah. 
Cords, coming on to you for this one, just before we go on to how the game has changed and become more professional in recent times. Um, Mars mentioned there sometimes it can be quite um, daunting starting out in a new sport, meeting new people. Are you going to get on with them? Are you going to be, are you going to be the only woman there? One thing Middlesex has done to combat that is run softball women's festivals at clubs uh, across Middlesex. And I think I'm right in saying we've got 20 or so festivals lined up for 2021, which is great news. They obviously offer a really great entry point for any woman that wants to get into cricket to turn up, very social environment, as, as Mars again said. That's what the clubs offer. Um, what would you say to any woman that wants to get involved through that route? Because that strikes me as a really good opportunity for women who just want to meet people and get playing cricket. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say that's a fantastic way to get involved in the game. Obviously, there's not too much pressure on it to, to take it to the next level or anything. It's just about exploring the game and exploring your passion for the game. And um, I, I've been to a couple of softball competitions myself and just seeing how much enjoyment women get out of it. And everyone, it's almost a, it's a game for everyone that everyone can get involved in and just have as much fun as possible. Um, you don't need to take it too seriously. And it can just be a sort of have a laugh and go and hit, hit a ball and bowl a couple of balls and stuff. So it's just you know, I'd say absolutely get involved. And, and like Naomi was saying earlier, um, I, cricket's a game for everyone and doesn't matter what age you are, um, get down to one of the softball competitions and, you know, just have, have a laugh and enjoy yourself. Um, it's a great way to meet people and also to, ex to explore cricket and, and see if you enjoy it. Absolutely, I agree entirely. Uh, Naomi, back to you. Um, let's move on to talking about you guys, your now, I think, one of 45 or so professional cricketers to play in the domestic women's game now. Um, congratulations, first and foremost, to each and every one of you. Um, how much harder are you working now, Gnomes, as a professional cricketer than perhaps what you did as a county cricketer or even younger? Uh, I think it's a different type of hard work. I think um, for me personally, it's uh, obviously now you know your this is your job and you kind of you kind of end up thinking about it you know 24 hours a day for me um especially um y you know we have you know four days of training a week plus your own individual um stuff that you need to do whether it be some rehab or extra running or sprints or anything like that and then also because it is your job you just take it that extra bit more seriously you know with all that added on stuff around recovery and nutrition and, and and things like that so I think I think it is a lot more different to county cricket uh you know county cricket was you train once a week with your team and play a game on a Sunday and everything else in between was up to you and quite independent so now it's because it's your job and it, you know something depends on it um you take it that much more seriously and therefore you have to put in that extra um amount of hard work but I mean I I'm sure the girls would agree we wouldn't have it any other way um, because this is what we've wanted to do for a very long time. And um, and it's quite cool that we can call ourselves professional cricketers and, and do this a day in, day out. So the hard work doesn't feel like hard work. It just feels quite easy to get on with, actually. I would agree. What, what would you say are the advantages you've already found being a professional? I think the biggest advantage is the support um, from all the staff and the team around you um you know like again for me personally I, a couple of months ago I found I had a stress factor and if I if I didn't know that I I wouldn't have known I had that had I not had the support from doctors and um cricket coaches and you know Danny at the, being the director and 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 so so on like if I was a county cricket I probably wouldn't have that chance to be had a have a scan and have be looked at looked at and be looked after so that's one of the biggest advantages of um of being a professional cricketer and all that support and I'm so grateful that we have um all of that around us to just make sure we are 100 fit and and can be ready for the season brilliant thanks gnomes amara um gnomes mentioned her time as a county cricketer and i knew the three of you when you played for middlesex you weren't contracted professionals uh, pleased to say you haven't changed at all, uh, which is nice. Um, I've got the utmost respect for women's county cricketers because the demands on them are, are high um, without any financial reward. Obviously, you've got the pride of playing to your county. How hard is it to keep yourself motivated when you're trying to balance studies, work, 
uh, and everything else that gets in the way of a normal life with representing a county as a women's cricketer? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it, it, it's tough. It's a county cricketer, I think, like you've touched on it there, Fletch, that kind of you're expected to obviously train at a very high level, but kind of at the same time, you still got, um, you're still having to find employment um, and yeah, your studies or whatever else you are doing alongside county cricket. So I think that's the difference now as a professional, isn't it? That you can you, you can take that time to work on your game and kind of just fully commit to it. Um, whereas in the past, I think there, it probably felt a bit kind of what if, um, kind of what if I had that extra time to spend on my cricket skills, but also our fitness and all those other areas that kind of contribute to your performance. Um, yeah, and, and I think the travel is a massive one with county cricket. Again, I think when it's, uh, you, you know, you're, you're travelling across the country a lot of the time um, and kind of that might be self-funded or it's kind of you're travelling on the morning of the game for like a three-hour journey or whatever it might be and then expected to go out and kind of score 100 a uh, week in, week out. Um, yeah, I think it is tough as a county cricketer um, when you, you aren't quite at that professional level yet. Thanks, Mars. What do you, what do you think you did as a county cricketer or even as, a, as an age group cricketer? What do you think you did that stood you out throughout that development phase to, to ultimately earn you this contract? Oh, good question. Um, <laughs> um, I like... I like to think that kind of, especially in more recent years, I think I kind of really established what my strengths were as a cricketer, more specifically as, as a, bat, a batter and then kind of just that self-awareness in terms of, you know, what are my strengths and really honing in on them and, and not trying to play too differently from that in terms of being consistent and and scoring where I knew I could score and kind of, not trying to bat like someone else, if that makes sense. I think that's where I always came into tr trouble. You know, I'm, I'm not the hardest hitter of the ball. And I think probably if I was if I was trying to go out and hit it as hard as Naomi and Cordelia, um, I probably wouldn't come off as well, I think. Um, but it took me a while to kind of establish that, I think, um, to actually, you know, find your own way and what works for you and kind of just stick to that and, and work hard on that. Brilliant, thank you. And Cords, uh, on that same theme of professionalising the game, I know you work exceptionally hard on your fitness and your strength. Um, are you are you working much harder now? And, and like Naomi, are you finding that you're kind of doing it with a great degree of willingness now that you're a paid professional? Yeah, definitely. I think before as a county cricketer, um, like Mars and, and Dats were saying, it's, it's one of those things you're having to balance your study and you're having to balance work. And you almost don't have the time to be able to commit to, to focusing on your, your fitness, your strength, your nutrition and making sure your body's ready for sort of the season and going forward. Um, so, yeah, now it comes with a lot more willingness. We have the time um, to be able to do that. And we're so grateful that we can have that opportunity to, to give 100 percent to to cricket, getting fit, getting strong and making sure that we're ready for, for the upcoming season as well. Um, yeah, it's required like a lot of sacrifice um, from from these girls as well along the way, um, and myself to to get to where we are. And we're just so grateful that we have the opportunity to be able to you know put everything into into our cricket now um, and the support that we receive from from the Sunriser setup as well. Brilliant. It seems um, it seems almost unthinkable that it's taken us until twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one to get fully contracted women's domestic cricketers it seems like a nonsense to me but thankfully we're there now um do you think that's going to change how appealing the game is to youngsters out there because now for the first time ever if you get involved in cricket you work hard and things fall in your place and you're good enough there is a career yeah definitely I think this has changed um women's cricket massively um obviously there's now a clear pathway and a clear structure that that young girls who are starting out at club can can aspire to. So from county, uh, club to county, through to the regional stuff that we're involved in, and then on to England, and you know it it almost gives them that that reassurance that the hard work and and effort that they put in um, will be rewarded, um, and they can get to sort of where we are and above. 
um, if they do put that hard work in and sort of enjoy it along the way as well. So, you know, it's um, it's a great sort of stepping stone in the right direction for, for women's cricket. And, and I'm sure there's sort of a lot of better things to come as well um, as, as we move forward. Thanks, Cords. Gnomes, back to you. Um, we talked about how hard you're working as a professional cricketer. Can I ask you, are you enjoying it as much as a pro as you were as a as a youngster growing up? Does the game get more appealing when you get paid for it? Does it get more pressured? Uh, it's a good question. I think we're still quite early into it, um, but just from um, just the one season so far that we've had, uh, I I'll be honest and say that I felt immediate pressure getting a contract. Um, just just the thought that everyone, you know, is watching, looking at your scores, the game's more accessible, um, and just feeling that pressure of, oh, I'm a professional cricketer now, I better score some runs and better take some wickets and, and so on. So, um, and it, it did take me a while um, last year to kind of, kind of just remind myself why I'm playing and, you know, remind myself how much I actually enjoy the game and that this is where I wanted to be. And um, the moment I'd done that, I re remind myself how much I enjoyed it when I was in a professional cricket only probably six weeks before <laughs> before getting the call. Um, it, it made things a lot easier. And, and I think the more you can remind yourself of, of doing that, then it doesn't really then you kind of forget about those pressures and you kind of just stick into your um, stick into your own bubble and uh, and just can continue to enjoy it. Absolutely. And Mars, how about you? How have you, how have you noticed life as a pro? Um, yeah, similar to Dax, I guess. I think there was that initial kind of realisation in the summer that we're getting paid to do this almost now. So you, you do feel a little added pressure in that you kind of, you need to be making performances and so on um but I think yeah you just kind of take those moments to sit back and think what a fantastic opportunity you've got and kind of just throw yourself into that I think um I feel like that's what I try to do and I feel like the, um the others as well kind of just immerse yourself in into training and everything and just challenge yourself I think that's a massive one for me, kind of, I, f I feel I can take a few more challenges in, in my game and things that I want to work on and things. Whereas before, be when I was trying to get to the position I'm in, I, I think I was playing a bit safer, almost just trying to be really consistent. Whereas now it's kind of, kind of kicking on and seeing how far you can go sort of thing. Brilliant. I'm going to now turn over to the uh, chat box because we've had a few questions come in. I've got one last question that I'm going to ask each and every one of you uh, as we finish the call. But I'm first going to go to the chat box. This one's come in from Vimal Samani. Uh, as a professional cricketer, um, I'll stay with you, Mars, to kick off this one. As a professional cricketer in the ladies stroke girls game, um, what and how do you keep yourself motivated to keep playing at the top? And what advice would you give to a, a youngster in their teens who wanted to follow in your footsteps? Okay. Um, in terms of how I stay motivated, I think probably similar to what I said just then. I think, you know, there's always areas that you kind of want to work on and, 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 and strive to get better at. Um, and I think for me, it's, it's kind of definitely around that. I think just constantly reflecting on how you can get better and not necessarily always focused on kind of the outcome and performance space, but kind of how I'm feeling. And that's been a big one for me this winter, especially in, in my approach to when I first go out to the middle and all those sorts of things. Um, so, yeah, I guess around just finding different things that, keep you going and you, you can always get better sort of thing. Um, and then was it advice to a, a teenager? Yeah, advice to a yeah, teenager who's, uh, who's wanting to follow that same path. That question also came in from Marilyn. So uh, popular theme on that one. Um, yeah, I think similar, like just keep, obviously just keep working really hard, but I think it, it sounds, uh, I, I want to say don't be afraid of making mistakes it sounds a little bit negative which I don't want it to come across that way but I think 
game uh, cricket can be a pretty awful game at times in that especially across the season you know there are a lot of times where you are going to fail and I think it's how quickly you can kind of process that and and bounce back from that um and what you can take from from those lessons basically um you know I think it'd be a pretty dream season if we never got out and we were taking wickets every over um so I think yeah just kind of being prepared for when that happens and how you can deal with that something that took me a while to especially in my teenage years I think I used to throw a few tantrums when I got out I got a few low scores and things um so yeah I think it just goes back to that perspective thing and why we play and always remembering that remembering that enjoyment factor that's really good advice Amara and I think you're absolutely right there's no greater leveler than cricket uh I'm going to turn this one over to you Cords um what do you think, as you're playing in it, what do, what do you think the 100 will do for the women's game? That question came in from Ali and Lucy. That's a great question. And I think the 100 is going to bring a lot more exposure and sort of coverage of the women's game. And I think it's going to take it um, to sort of that next level um, with getting women's cricket on people's radars. Um, we're going in the right direction as it is. But I think with the new format, um, one that's going to be really exciting. Um, they've done a lot of coverage of it and on sort of social media and, and on television as well. So I think it's going to be a really exciting competition. And I think with a lot of the women's games also being played just before the men's games, I think hopefully that will bring crowds to, to come down, watch the women's games as well. And, you know, get, sort of increase that exposure and coverage of the women's game um, across sort of all channels. Um, and I think it's only going to do... Um, all good for, for, for the women's game actually um, and as we're sort of all involved in it I think I can probably say that we're all really looking forward to the competition it could be something new something a bit more exciting and yeah it should be a good competition. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, Gnomes you can pick this one up um, and this is no uh, no personal slant on your batting ability. Um, Frankie Chambers asks uh, as a professional cricketer is it still normal to miss a well-bowled ball? The short answer is yes. <laughs> um, of course it is. Um, you know, we say this all the time in training. Bowlers, batters can play good shots and bowlers can bowl good balls. And sometimes um, when you're walking off the pitch and you think, oh, crap, I've got out. Um, it, it's, it's a really good habit actually to get in into and say, well, was that a good ball? Could I have done anything about it? If the answer is no, then it's a good ball. Um, but if the answer is yes, and you, you think you could have made a better decision or executed it better, um, then that's just something to learn uh, for, for the next game. But you, 100%, you could be bowled by an absolutely stunner of a ball and you know you can't do anything about it. And you just you kind of pick yourself up and, and go next game. So true. Uh, there's a part two to that question, and it's... Uh... Is it normal to be a little bit scared of fast bowlers? I'd say absolutely. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, of course, you know, I think the uh, best example I can give is I still play some men's cricket now and I'm not going to lie, I, I get a little bit scared sometimes when someone, one of the boys bowl a bit shorter and, and a bit faster. But I think... Um, I think the more you practice, I guess, that skill, the more comfortable you get with it. And then you, you won't be as scared. Um, so I think it's just challenging, just challenging that and trying to get better at it. And the more, you, like I said, the more you practice, um, the more confident you'll feel about um, when that ball is bowled faster. And, and, you're, and you'll then learn techniques to, to deal with it and, and build your shots around that. So um yeah, just keep working on that, on that and uh, you'll feel more confident as, as you go along. That's great advice. Um, Miles, I'm going to come back to you for this one. Um, how did you stay confident playing against boys who'd been playing a lot more often than you, especially when you were batting? You kind of touched on that earlier in one of your answers, but... Um, yeah, I guess... I guess similar to what Naomi's just said there, actually, I think, it's, yeah, just when you're walking off, kind of assessing whether it was kind of something else you could have done um, or if it was just a good ball or not. I think 
I don't know, just from experience and going out there and, and doing it, I know I think sometimes you just had to, you just got to be a, a little bit brave and just go for it, I think. Um, and yeah, I think I've had plenty of experiences where I've come off and just thought, you know, that was, that was pretty awful. But I think you just got to persist with it and go again. And, you know, those good performances will come. And like anything, you, you get better through practice and, and doing it and experience it, I think. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Cords, this one's for you. Um, uh, this comes in from Vidika Bedi, and I, I think it's a really important question. How do you deal with people comparing men's and women's women's cricket and uh, making comments? Because it's common. Yeah, it is very common. And I think it's just one of the things you have to kind of take with a pinch of salt. I think there's always going to be comparisons between the men's and women's games, but it's important to remember that both are at different stages. Um, so, I mean, we've got to take it. We can't look too much... Um, we can't be too negative in terms of our comparisons because it, those negative comments aren't sort of warranted. As I mentioned, we're, we're at different stages of, of the game and obviously women have just become professionals in the domestic sphere. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult one um, and there are always going to be comparisons. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's just about taking it with a pinch of salt, but also those negative comments aren't, aren't really warranted and, yeah, remembering that we're at different stages. The men's have been professional for a very, very long time and this is all new for, for a lot of us as well. I think that's a really important point. The men's game has been professional for decades and decades and decades and, and you've all talked about the advantages that you get as cricketers playing in a professional environment. Um, so it's almost unfair for, to make that comparison. And I, I think, if anything, the women's game has, I'm sure you'd agree, the women's game has just come on so much. It's almost irrecognisable to what it was 10 years ago. Uh, and, and the growth in quality and speed and, and technical ability in, in women, the women's game is massive. Um, right, here we go. Here's one for you, Gnomes, as a seamer. Um, comes in from Emma, Richard and um, Charlotte. As a fast bowler, how do you reduce your chances of getting an injury? Good question. I think I don't think I've met a single fast bowler who's not been injured. So the first thing is to actually realise that you're probably going to be get a few niggles now and again. But I think it's really important um, to to work on things like your strength, uh, you know, your core core um, exercises. You know, I've been currently doing them every single day <laughs> at the moment to make sure I reduce reduce any return of in injury but I think if, if that's a that's something that you can do from now and yeah I think strength training is is really important but just something that works for you um not every, that doesn't mean you have to live lift heavy heavy weights but just uh, something that's adequate to make sure your muscles are robust enough to take the forces um of of when you're bowling because I, I think they say it's like eight or nine times your body weight that goes through your bowling action. So your body needs to withstand those forces. Um, and, and just generally recovery is a massive one as well. Um, especially in the summer, if you're constantly bowling, um, you know, four or five times a week, um, and then training in the nets and, and so on, it's just maybe just take a day or two off, um, in, especially when you're younger, you probably want to keep bowling and bowling and bowling. So um, just take a couple of days off a week and um, it will just help you stay stronger and, and recover better. Chuck in a bath or two, that might help. <laughs> um, um, Terrific. Thank you very much. Um, and Cords, just one on nutrition uh, and diet. Um, have, you, have you always eaten healthily or have you kind of changed your diet now? Are you, are you under the guidance of a nutritionalist or an snc coach that's watching what you're eating yeah so we have um a lot of support uh with sort of nutrition uh at the moment so we had sort of a meeting with a nutritionist and sort of giving us um sort of how an ideal sort of day should look um in terms of what we should be eating how much protein we should be eating how we should structure our meals um on a training day and a non-training day so I think that's changed massively, especially for me. Um, I've always eaten pretty healthily, but in terms of getting the right amount of protein in, um, that's always been something as sort of that I've kind of struggled with a little bit. Um, so so I've, had, I've kind of realized that I need a, a bigger protein intake, 
sort of to withstand what what we're doing at the moment and structuring my meals as well um I'm having to eat a lot more than I probably was used to eating before and um it's it is making a massive difference and obviously hydration is is vitally important as well um so we've kind of started taking some like protein shakes and having grenade bars kind of to ensure that we can sort of stay um up there with our sort of protein levels levels as well um but yeah for me it's changed quite a lot from how I used when I used to play county cricket I just have like a couple of sandwiches and and then go out and and play again but I think now with sort of meal planning and and making sure that I have um enough protein and enough sort of energy um uh, for, for sort of the amount of training that we're doing is um is, is a massive difference and is uh yeah is making a huge uh, different to my game brilliant whole new world um cords i'm going to stay on you my final question that i'm going to put to each uh, each of the three of you um so cords lastly what's the most important thing any women's critic cricketer can do to get recognized and progress in the game like you guys have is it volume of games how hard you work how much you listen to your coaches all of those what's your one nugget of advice I would just say to, to work hard, put a hundred percent into what you do. Um, don't be afraid of hard work um, because ultimately at the end of the day, it will be rewarded um, because you will perform and you, and you will have those sort of golden moments, which people start picking up on. So um, all I'd say is to enjoy yourself, um, but also just work hard along the way and whatever you put your mind to, um, you can definitely achieve. We've got the pathway in place and, you know, we've got the support now um, to be able to sort of achieve, what you want to achieve brilliant thanks cords and mars to you um for, i think something along the lines of um com commit or commitment obviously you know cricket can be a pretty full-on game and obviously quite time consuming at times but also when you actually go into it in long in the decision making process and all those sorts of things like just commit to a decision and stick with it, whether that's with bat or ball, those sorts of things. Just, I think that's the hardest part of the game is deciding what to do. I think once you've made a decision, go for it and see what happens. Brilliant. Thanks, Mars. And Names, you've got a tough job now because these two have taken all the best answers. Um, I think, yeah, I agree with what the girls have said there. And, and the massive one for me that I've probably learned in the last few years is um, self-reflection. I think... You know, you girls are going to have so many games now when you're younger. And I think it's really important if you can reflect and learn from your, from your mistakes and your successes, um, you know, that'll put you in a really good position. And, that, and actually it will help you just stay a bit more present in, in, in what you're doing and just enjoy the ride, basically. Like, just learn and enjoy what you're doing and get better, get better every single game and, you know, in no time you'll you you'll be surprised at, at where you get to so that'll be my advice no thank you i think that's really great advice from all three of you so uh, everyone take note of that um that just about brings us to a close i want to thank uh, everybody that's uh, jumped on the call and, uh, and have sat at home watching i hope you found it as interesting as i have and informative from the three uh, pros uh, massive, massive thank you to each of uh, Naomi, Amara and Cordelia. I know you've been training hard all day in, uh, in Cambridge. Uh, when you said it was going to be tough as a pro, you didn't think it would be an hour spent of an evening on a Zoom call with me. Um, but thank you to each of you for your time. This has been great. And to everyone who's tuned in, thank you for your time.